so real quick before you did that did Um, mm -hmm. And your your origin story, like how did you get into? Is that he? Uh, he made an age joke the last time we were. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna use that kuka. So, so I'll go to a seller and like I said, I'll analyze the, the properties, you know, analyze four ways always, right? So mm -hmm. low ball cash offer, right? Here's, here's my number. Yep. Um, if you'll entertain a lease option mm -hmm. or a land, land contract yep. or a subject to, yep. right? They can't do a low ball cash offer if they don't have the equity. Right. Just the hands are tied. They can't do it. Yeah. Right. And so it's not always a distressed property. Sometimes it's a distressed situation. Yes. They, they got into a property. They can't afford the payments anymore. They they didn't want to go into foreclosure. Well, guess what? I'll come in. I'll just take over your payments. Mm -hmm. Right. I'm, I'm, you know, but now you have to analyze that because what are your options at that point? Again, there's no equity. So you can't flip that property. Yeah. Your only option is to hold that as a rental. Yep. Can you do that? Is there structural damage? Is there, you know, fifty thousand dollars worth of deferred maintenance that you know or work that has to be done? There's a roof caving in. That's not something just because the opportunity of subject to deal is there that you you have to jump on it. You still have to analyze it and know what you're doing, yep. right? But all those. You know, almost every contract is assignable. So whether you got a subject to or a lease option or a land contract, you can assign those to another buyer for a fee if you don't want to stay in the deal. But you have to analyze that deal as if you are. Yes. Because other investors are not suckers, right? They're going to analyze yep. it. So you have to present a good deal to them if you're if you plan on, you know, being a wholesaler that's worth a damn. Right. Yeah. You got to know what you're doing. I've even yeah. partnered with my sellers. Right. Mm -hmm. So if if the sellers see, for example, they want one hundred thousand dollars for the property and it needs fifty thousand dollars in work, say the ARV is two hundred thousand. So I'm not including soft costs or commissions. or right. anything like that. So say, for example, I, you know, I only have fifty thousand in cash. I don't have one hundred and fifty thousand to pay them one hundred and then put fifty into it. So, Mr. and Mrs. Seller, let's partner, add me to the deal, create an LLC, whatever yep. needs to be done, right? And I'm not going to pay you for the property right now, but I'm going to pay the $50,000 in, in the repairs. Mm -hmm. Now we own a property that's worth $200,000. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now we sell it for two hundred. dollars You get your hundred. dollars I get my fifty. dollars we split what's what's different, yep. what, what's left, right? Now the seller made one hundred and twenty-five thousand. Yep. Instead of a hundred, mm -hmm. I made fifty percent on my money, but I didn't have to buy the house. I all I had to do was put fifty thousand into it. I made I made a fifty fit on a property. So if it's a win-win situation and, and you can work it out. Sometimes partnering with the seller is the best option. Yep. You never want someone to walk away from a deal feeling like they get cheated. Right. They won't do business with you again. If you, you do good business, you'll do more business. They'll refer you to their friends and their family and say, hey, you're in a tough situation. That I was in a tough situation. Here's who I went to. She'll help you out. And I totally agree with that. You got to do business ethically no matter what. Um, well, I have ethics training with my real estate license, yeah. my ins insurance license. I trust me. I know, and and then I see the mistakes that people make. Yeah. I see property managers out there that are not licensed. They have the proper yep. licensing. So that that's that's another reason why, you know. Again, on Tuesday, I passed my broker's exam because it was important that everything's in compliance before I open shop. Yep. No, I 100% agree with you on that. And um, first off, congratulations on your broker's license. So, 30 years in the making. Never thought I needed it until yeah. now. Because like I said, I don't, do it. I don't do anything on the MLS. Exactly. <laughs> but, but you know what? You could have team members. You could have 
whatever, you know, anything like that. I so, start delegating. Yeah. And, um, you know, obviously, I, and that actually brings me to uh, a quick, you know, we, we can continue the discussion offline. That's no problem. But um, I definitely think that, you know, there might be some areas where you can do some automation or I can even help you on some of that um, in either your wholesaling or some of your other businesses. Um, just because I've been doing this with the newer and doing it mainly from home as much as possible. <laughs> so um, so we definitely can get together and work out something like that, no problem. I'm always here to help anybody, you know, so. Yeah, I need, I need um, help from the younger generation <laughs> with, um, technology. Yeah, so with that, um, you know, what is it you're doing right now though so you're doing you you mentioned you're doing the wholesaling you mentioned you're doing the, the short-term rentals um yeah. what else are you are you getting into fix and flips or are you getting into um, yeah. um buy, more buy and holds yeah yeah for sure um so like i said i i don't have any long-term rentals right now i changed them all to short-term rentals and then i okay. downsized from that after my my husband passed away about two and a half years ago Sorry so I, I had to regroup and, and downsize thank you um but right now what i do is um out Real estate's always been my bread and butter, yep. right? Um, but it's not what I've done the longest. Yep. But um, about four years before I got into real estate, um, I started a, a legal service and I've worked for over 200 attorneys in the Metro Detroit area. Okay. Um, I was doing, I had eight employees. I was 19 years old. I had eight employees under me, um, but I was doing a lot of court filings and getting orders signed by judges and things. That's changed because a lot of it's done electronically now, but I still yes. serve papers. I'm a process server and um, I can tell you tons of stories about that. But um, anyway, so I do that with my son now and um, yeah, so I'm, uh, yeah, I'm a real estate investor. I do a lot of wholesaling. Um, like, for example, anything in Detroit that comes my way, I'll, I'll wholesale that. I, I'm not going to yeah. uh, hold anything. But out here, you know, I'm in the Ann Arbor area. So out this way, I'll look into, you know, holding, um, flipping, uh, definitely um, always an option. Yep. Um, right now, you know, the price is fluctuating. I, I do have my contractor that I, I know and trust. So that's an obstacle for a lot of people. Um, mm -hmm. Contractors are the biggest obstacle when it comes to flipping. Um, but um, I, I have my life insurance broker's license. I'm a life insurance broker. Um, been doing that for a couple years. Actually got my license after my, my husband passed away. So, mm -hmm. um, but I am, side note, I'm looking into the infinite banking concept, which actually is a very nice marriage between my real estate license and my life insurance license. Yes. Because, um, and it's, it's fabulous, but I never teach anything that I don't know or I've actually done. Yep. So I'm learning about this because um, I want to have the most accurate information and be able to, to, to do it properly. But that is very, very intriguing to me, um, especially for real estate investors. Um, be your own bank, right? Yep. Be your own banker. There's a book that I'm actually reading right now. But um, I do one-on-one -on -one mentorships, coaching. Um, I can do a group setting. I've got an mm -hmm. Airbnb class coming up um, later this month. Um, with a, with a broker in Wyandotte. Um, I've got some eBooks and things like that, you know, mm -hmm. just trying to help people. But um, I do a lot of wholesaling. I mean, as far as what I've done and what I teach, um, mm -hmm. lease options, land contracts, subject to obviously short-term rentals. Um, I actually love being a host. Um, yeah. It is different, but I spoil my guests uh, like crazy. And I, I, I don't get anything less than five star um, reviews. But, um, and uh, like I said, I, I'll partner with uh, people. Um, mm -hmm. I, I do have a lot of people that say, you know, I've, I've got the funds, I've got the means, I just don't have the knowledge or the experience. I don't want to make the mistakes. Yep. I'll, we can partner together and, you know, split the proceeds or whatever. I'm open to that. I've always been open to that. Um, but, 
my suggestion to people especially if they're getting started is to learn everything that you can learn you don't want to come into this business ignorant or not knowing um you know as well as i know you've seen yep. it can be vicious yeah. it can be vicious when it's like when there's some sharks out there that if if they get a sense that you don't know what you're doing yep. and you're out there pretending like you do they'll eat you alive i mean i see it and it's a very male dominant industry i'm speaking yep. from a female at this point very male dominant industry and i have no problem getting in a pissing contest with <laughs> <laughs> anyway, <laughs> chances are I've been doing it longer than them, and I know more yeah. than them. But um, I'm I'm always good up for a good challenge. Um, but um, another thing too that people have to understand is um, when you're putting in offers and you're negotiating with someone, always ask, 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 ask. Every the answer to every question that you don't ask is always no. Yes. And um, a good example of that is is back in uh, back back in the day when we were buying a pro- I mean we were we were buying four or five I mean getting accepted offers four or five properties a month. Okay. We were wholesaling and we were cherry picking the ones that we wanted to keep as rentals yep. and so forth. But um, there was one property that we were negotiating on and there was it was it was a nice brick ranch it was an inkster and um it was a beautiful octagon picnic table in the backyard we like oh we like the, we liked the picnic yeah. table. so we were, we actually put in the offer that they they left the picnic table as part of the sale right and they were, oh man we can't we can't leave the picnic table you know that was a wedding gift from um you know so and so but but we can let you keep the dog <laughs> <laughs> like, no, we don't want the dog. We don't have any use for this dog, you know. Right. But so, but the answer was no. But what I'm saying is that you never know. We we put offers on car with oh on houses God. that had cars in the garage, you know, yeah. beat down Mercedes. We're like, we want that Mercedes and in, in, included in the sale. But you never know what you're gonna get unless you ask. So always ask. Yep. And and exactly. um, I, I had heard. Uh, there's a saying that said if you're if you're um if you're not embarrassed by your offer it wasn't low enough <laughs> you know what i've heard that so many times <laughs> yes. it is it is yeah. but it's true yeah because if I mean, they if they immediately immediately say yes yeah. you're like okay, okay there's, some there's some there's some motivation there. there there's either motivation or no basically you're not doing your numbers right but when we were buying with a hard money lender when i was dealing with the sellers i would basically tell them look based on the financing that we can get because we can't get traditional financing because of the condition okay yes. we both know this place is a dump right there's yep. no denying that yep right so so based on the financing that we're able to get for this place we have to be below this number. I'm not trying to lowball you. I'm not trying to play games. This is the numbers. This is what we're dealing with. So we can't come higher. You know, right. our hands are tied. We can't. And so when we would explain that to the seller, they would understand and not make it look like we're just trying to take advantage of them. We explain them that this is our financing options. Right. So, no, 100% agree with you on that. Um, and I, I really think that that is super super helpful tips because the thing is is that we don't want we're not going after these perfect houses that are brand new or brand new builds or or just five years old and they right. don't need a ton of work we're going after these dumps that need a ton of work right you know well that's so, the motivation to get yeah. a discount if you don't have that motivation then what's the point Right. You're it. not going to get a house that needs no work in perfect condition you, unless the seller is in a bad situation, yeah. you know, themselves. I always They're love it gonna... when I always love it when I get talk to new buyers and I'm like, "Okay, well, what is it you want?" Oh, we only want to do it in the suburbs, you know, Oakland County, um if it's Macomb then more north, you know, like everybody else. And oh, by the way, we only want um carpet paint remodels that's it i'm like you and everybody else buddy yeah to get in line i'm like <laughs> you and everybody else you yeah, that's have what to everyone change, is looking for you're gonna have to change some of that criteria real quick to 
especially if you say you want it at a 70% discount. You right. know? So uh, either you're going to pay more for it or you're going to be waiting a pretty long time. So uh, yeah. to do a little bit bigger of a rehab. So um, now with that going, you know, you said you do mentorships, you do, you have courses, things like that. Um, how did you get into doing all of that? Well, when we, when we went from students to trainers yeah. with okay. Russ, the, Russ Whitney back in the, you know, late nineties. That's 90s. right. Yeah. Yeah. So we started mentoring and, and stuff there and it was all, you know, I mean, it, it was all great information and the students were yeah. very, very successful. Once a day that I would pray for you I'd go and misbehave just so you'd notice too Sneaking looks up and down from across the room 